billion US dollars to shed more light on uh, the important uh, trade file. We are very much delighted to have with us, if only His Excellency, Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and our economic expert. Thank you very much for being with us, sir, and a very good morning. Good morning. It's my pleasure. Sir, before going into the details, how do you evaluate the size of trade exchange between Egypt and Africa? It is very good, but not good enough for our ambition. We, we, we can do better, we can do more, but uh, the good uh, side of the story that Egypt is very energetic uh, country with its policy towards Africa. We are one of the oldest diplomacy in Africa. We are accepted everywhere. We are represented in every single country in Africa. And they are represented in Cairo also with embassies and missions. So, but we, we have many challenges in the continent that uh, bureaucracy is too, too, too much to, to bear for uh, somebody who wants to make good trade mm -hmm. or good investment. Mm -hmm. Banking system needs uh, uh, much more visits to ameliorate in order to come to the international level of the banking system, which you call it Basel I, Basel II, Basel III. Mm. Transport in Africa needs to be ameliorated, whether it is uh, airway traffic or road traffic or uh, ports, uh, to, 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 to bring the situation to you uh, that our ports, most of the ports of Africa, cannot receive big ships. So, for Egypt to export to Africa by uh, maritime way, we have to ship to uh, other country like India, then to re-ship re on smaller uh, uh, ships in order to be able to reach the African continent. Many Sir, like when, you, when you started uh, your answer, you said it's not up to our ambition, okay? Yes, yes. It's not we, up to our ambition I, I mean, as Egypt or our more. ambitions as Egypt and the other side of the coin, the African absolutely, states. Absolutely, yes. We hope for more. Yeah. And we, we, the good thing is that we are aware of the obstacles and we are working on it. But it costs a lot. It costs a lot. We need uh, help from developed countries. We need a lot from those who can invest in Africa. China is a good model because China is investing on establishing small roads, small ways of transport, ameliorate uh, the banking system, and so on. But uh, to be frank, it needs huge efforts in all these fields. If you permit me to say that, sir, I think now in the moment we are witnessing uh, a competition between particularly China and Russia with their presence in Africa because they learned the lesson that Africa is a very rich country, uh, sorry, continent when it comes to the natural resources, to the, uh, uh, the human cadres. And I remember uh, that um, His Excellency, President of Comoros, who is currently the President of the African Union, when he had this, um, uh, this uh, press conference with President Vladimir Putin in the African-Russian summit just, just two days ago, he said that Russia uh, um, announced that it's going to support Africa in the field of education and vocational training. To have this presence uh, uh, there and to, to um, when this presence is there, meaning that more relations are going to be boosted or enhanced, and the investment and trade, it's not an exception. If you want to elaborate on that or the importance of such point. This is a very good point, and it's true. But uh, the problem also, one side of the problem, that most of Africa's production is monopolized by uh, European countries. I try to buy timber or wood in Africa. They ask me to come and to cut it myself because those who, who are cutting the trees, they took it to Europe and if I want to buy it, I cannot buy it from Africa. I, sh I should buy it from uh, European capitals for uh, triple or double the price. Mm. So uh, that was my proposal for the Egyptian government 
to establish very small companies, 10 tractors and 100 sous and 100 young gentlemen to go and to cut the trees and to send it directly to Egypt. This will cost us one-third of the cost if I buy it from Europe. Mm -hmm. And here comes the competition. Mm -hmm. But uh, still we have to work on this. So whenever I'm asked how we can ameliorate the trade among the African countries, I said investment is the word. Yeah. We have to invest on small and medium-sized uh, projects. Mm -hmm. We can establish small companies to produce canned food. Uh, when I gave a present of one box of canned food to one prime minister in Africa, he said, I, I, I am calling you not to thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, not, to, not to thank you. I am call, calling you to congratulate you. We didn't know that Egypt is having such important uh, industry. Mm -hmm. Come and teach us how to do this. Because I have witnessed plenty uh, of, of uh, fruits and vegetables. They just throw it. They don't have the ways and the means to export it immediately. They don't have the way to freeze it or to contain it or to make it uh, a canned food. Many things are in uh, the pipeline. But yeah. it, we, need, we need more investment and more time to realize it. Amen to that, sir. But the political leadership was very keen to seize each opportunity to express readiness to uh, boost cooperation with the, our African uh, allies or brotherly nations in all domains. And in addition to what you've kindly mentioned regarding the new startups or the small companies, the medium and small size uh, uh, projects, uh, we also are ready to participate or to give a big hand in mega national projects like the Julius Nereri mm -hmm. uh, Dam in Tanzania, for example. I think that this is also a very big example or are even a role model mm -hmm. of how Egypt can have a big share when it comes to the development projects in Africa, if you want to elaborate on this. You are giving very good examples of the cooperation. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I must confess that after all, our uh, uh, capital resources are limited. That's why our president make his initiative uh, from Sharm el Sheikh to call on the donor countries to come and invest in Africa with the Egyptian experience and uh, uh, for foreign finance. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, so, some good reaction from China, from Japan, and from the European Union. But it takes time, and of course we have to do all our best in order to realize such a situation. But I think we are on the right track. It needs a lot of efforts and some time in order to come to what both of us are seeking for. The free trade area. This is also a key word, and it was mentioned more than once that it can be um, the solution for many problems we have in, intra, in African intra-trade. True? This is true. This is very true, and I am proud of it because I was part of establishing the Comessa. Mm -hmm. When Egypt joined the Comessa in the year 2000, if you compare it with our expos now, yeah. To Africa, it is uh, increased by three times, mm -hmm. and our trade balance is uh, realizing uh, uh, surplus in favor of Egypt. Now, when our president, uh, uh, during his chairmanship mm -hmm. of the African Union in 2019, he uh, asked for uh, a bigger, a larger, uh, one free trade area for the whole 51. African countries and all the countries agreed upon it. Most of them have ratified the agreement for that. And now, legally, we can export to the whole African continent without uh, any custom duties or any trade barriers. This really a, a, a good uh, solution and a very good, very good idea. Yeah, Mind you, sure. the whole European continent 
uh, already uh, uh, have a big, big market without any custom duties or any trade barriers. Well, um, sir, one final question. Um, some voices are saying that we have not used um, to the maximum our strategic locations, particularly in the Suez Canal Zone. And um, these voices are saying that if we do have um, industrial, African industrial zones in specific, um, in, in this area, it's going to be a win-win situation and it's going to, uh, uh, to add a lot or to be an added value to our trade exchange between us and our African allies. In short, if you yeah. permit me, sir, uh, how yeah. can you see this? Yes, uh, the Suez Canal by itself, it is a gift of God because of the geographic position. It is in the middle of the whole world. Here you can invest of, on uh, 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 producing industrial goods. Uh, you can invest on uh, making some stores for countries like Japan, mm -hmm. China, India, or Russia, in order to come very near to the European market. And all of them uh, understand that. Yeah. Uh, once I was amazed when I, I was trying to buy some uh, uh, Brazilian coffee. Yeah. We received the Brazilian coffee from their stores in Beirut. Same thing for Cuban sugar, because it, they come, they store their merchandise nearer to the market. Mm. This is the idea of Swiss Canal. You can store your uh, production, you can produce there, you can establish new services like supplying the uh, crossing ships with the needs of fuel, of food, of repairing the ships, uh, building ships also. So, so this canal is a very important Amen to that. And so there are millions of innovative ideas, ready. but it's we need just to start, and we already started well. Uh, as usual, I enjoyed our discussion. Uh, sir, have a very good day. Thank you, thank you. We were very much delighted to have with us via phone His Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister and our economic and diplomatic figure. Well, by this we come to the end of our episode. Stay tuned on Nile TV International Hours for more updates. And for more details, please log on to www.nileinternational.net. Many thanks for watching. This was Nirmin Abdurrahman.